answer there. And then we're going to move on to the second question with yourself, uh, Bruce. It is one that does uh, often make its way back to our comments section, and it is uh, the maxim of Urkhat for Kup. And the question here then um, from the tenant, uh, well, from the from the viewer, say that a tenant of ours, I believe this is possibly an agent, a tenant of ours is in a property where the landlord owes a lot of money on, on the bonded rates. Uh, the house is now being sold by the bank. Uh, then the question is, does the tenant lose his right to stay in the house, even with a valid lease in place? Uh, the tenant is stressing because he can only move if the landlord gives him back most of the rent uh, he paid this month to put down a deposit on the new rental. Uh, so otherwise he has nowhere to go. Uh, so the question then, Bruce, is what are the rights uh, that the tenants have, uh, maybe in law and just principle? Well, there are actually a number of issues in this question and the two scenarios that I'd like to differentiate. Now, it's in the question they said the house has been sold by the bank. Now, what sometimes happens in South Africa is the banks help landlords, especially in distressing situations, to sell the property. And this is your traditional, hi, I'm selling this to big pompies. It's by way of private treaty, as we say. In which case, the maxim, hier gaat verkoop, would apply. And the tenant's rights are still the same. They do not change. They just have to pay to the new landowner. And that's that in that specific scenario. However, it does change a bit where it's sold by way of sheriff's auction. Because in that such an instance, the principle of hier gaat verkoop does not necessarily apply after the sheriff's auction, especially where it's condition of the sheriff's auction that the property is sold without that encumbrance or onerous title, as they like to say, especially in recent case law. In fact, I saw a case recently where there was a there was a little bit of back and forth regards to a property that had transferred and then had to be retransferred. And truth be told, the documentation that was concluded was a little bit fraudulent in the sense that they were trying to execute simulated transactions. And the court held that regardless, if a lease was concluded, it was put uh, in one person's name, party A, and they concluded a lease with party B, and the house is re-transferred back, uh, back to party Z. Party Z is not subject to the maximum of heat hot for quip because he did not initially intend on transferring the property. Also, there's the onerous title provision that it was not concluded in good faith. In addition, and more importantly, and I can't emphasize this enough, is that it was actions beyond the party's controls. So I'd like that distinction to be made very clear. If the shares auction, chances are the, light, the rights of occupancy are terminated upon the fall of the hammer, so to speak. That being said, Mr. Tennant, you do not despair. You've got plenty of rights. You cannot be evicted without a court order. In fact, to do so is a criminal offense in South Africa. Also, you can approach the Rental Housing Tribunal at, for free should the new property owner attempt to unlawfully evict you. And the Rental Housing Tribunal is very good. They are very efficient in giving um, spoilation and anti-eviction orders. And they're more than willing to help the public. Often they are sometimes perceived as being pro-tenant. But for Mr. Tenant, this is your ideal opportunity to make use of that forum. That being said, there's something else, especially regarding rent. You could always negotiate with the bank saying, hi, you want to sell this property. You will get more out of it if I leave so you can sell it with a vacant occupation. So now, Mr. Landlord, I would like him and you, Mr. Bank, to work together to negotiate so I get money back. Now, this is just a practical solution. Chances are the bank is going to fob you off, but they would be tempted by the vacant occupation because that increases their, the return on the sale or rather increases the proceeds. And this way you could potentially get something out. The likelihood of it being successful, well, I, from previous cases I've seen it's a bit of hit and miss. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes not at all. And that's the long and the short of this question without going into it 
what, without making far too many assumptions. Mm. Nick, what are your thoughts? Yeah, look, um, uh, absolutely. Um, from from my side, look, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, gray areas that that are happening here. Um, you know, and and looking at the at the question, there's some other questions that we have. But but my ultimate feeling is, I don't see that there was any um, foul play on behalf of tenants in the circumstances. Um, oh. And and so if that is the case, you know, the prevailing case laws, I understand it, is it deals with circumstances like that. If you're an innocent party tenant, um, it's it's very likely that the law is going to protect you in the circumstances. And that principle of Girkhat for Quirk, we've dealt with it on the channel many a time. Uh, please go look at our old videos where we deal with the principle in, in effect. But as an innocent third party tenant, you are, you're going to have some protection and, and the lease agreement, although it might... There might be conditions attached that it's got to come to an end or, or whatever the case is in respect of the sale. You're still going to have a right to the property and any prospective purchase and the property is still going to have to continue um, to comply with the terms of the lease agreement as long as you do um, and you pay your rental and, and you obviously have uphold the principles of the lease agreement. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that uh, does answer the question and a very important emphasis on the applicability and the differentiation between uh, which party is actually selling, is it an auction or is it a bank? Uh, that does bring us to the end of uh, today's two questions and answers. And thank you once again for Bruce for making himself available for today. And we'll see everybody again next week. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jens. Thank you all. Uh, good session, guys.